Part A of this problem asks us to find uh, the acceleration of car B when both cars are side by side at a, a given time interval or time point, four seconds here. Now, in order to find when those two cars are at the same position, we first need to find out what that position is. We are given a lovely little graph here that says that at t equals four seconds, car A will be right around here which is this little tick right here. And the problem tells us that, to set the scale, the problem tells us that x sub s is 32.0 meters. So if we look over this graph, we can see that each tick uh, in the, on the vertical axis represents a change of about four meters. So that means that at this point in time, at t equals four seconds, car a, car a has reached a point of four meters below 32, so that's 28 meters. So I'll make a little note of that here, that car A will be at x equals 28 meters at t equals 4 seconds. So that's something we'll want to keep in mind, because it's going to be important. Another thing we'll want to determine really quick is the rate at which car A is moving. Now we can see from the graph that shows car A's movement that it's a straight line. This means that car A is not accelerating at all, it's moving at a constant velocity, because the fact that it's a straight line means that the rate of change of displacement is not changing. It's, uh, it's moving at a constant rate, which means its velocity is unchanging. So let's find out what that speed is. Uh, since we're given a graph of the line, we can find the car's speed by taking the slope of this line. So I'll call that V sub A, and of course we can find the slope of the line using rise over run. So let's use the classic algebra technique of looking at the slope, looking at the line, and finding two points at which the line seems to perfectly overlap with a grid point, with a grid intersection. So we've got some numbers we can work with. And it seems like that happens at these two points. So we want to find the rise, that's how far it's moved up. So during, from these two points that I've highlighted here, that would be a rise of one tick, so just four meters, over two seconds. So that's divided by two seconds. So that tells us that car A's speed is two meters per second, a very slow moving car. Now that we have that, we'll want to use some form of kinematics to find what car A's acceleration must be. Now, of course, we've got three main kinematics of formulas, formulas that we'll typically use. We have the velocity one, the displacement one, and the velocity squared one. For this problem, I think it makes the most sense to use the displacement formula, uh, this one right here. And I'm choosing this one because it's the only one of the three that has both acceleration and displacement, which are both important because acceleration is what we actually want to find of car, in, car B case, in car B's case. And displacement is uh, an important variable in order to find that because we need to make sure that they've reached the same position. So we'll have to have that. So that position needs to be a part of the equation. And in this context, A is AB, the acceleration of the car that you want to find. And V naught is the car's initial speed, which the problem tells us is 12 meters per second. Wow, I'm terrible at underlining. Anyways, let's rewrite this formula to solve for A. So first I've subtracted both sides of the equation by V naught T to get the term that has the a in it on its own. And next I'm going to divide everything that's not the a by both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by everything in this term that's not a to get a completely on its own. This is what you should end up with. And the, the half, dividing both sides by the half, of course, just becomes a 2 in the numerator, multiplying everything in the parentheses here. And we just plug in our knowns for this. So the 28 goes into delta x. 12 meters per second goes into v naught, and 4.0 seconds goes into the t. If we do this properly, we get an acceleration of negative 2.5 meters per second squared. Part B asks us to find the, how many times the cars are side by side, the number of times that this happens. Now really what this is asking about is the number of times at which the position of both cars are the same. So we want to get formulas for the position of both cars. 
Now, fortunately for both cars, this is fairly straightforward. For car A, the position is just going to be its initial position, which is given to us by the graph as 20 meters, plus 2t. Since that's 2, the slope of the graph, the, the car's speed, to multiplied by the by the dependent variable here, or the independent variable here. Now for x sub b, we already have this formula up here. This is going to be v naught t plus one half of a t squared. Now what we want is to find the number of values for t that make this equation true. Now you might notice from the t squared here that this is something that's going to have to turn into some form of quadratic formula. So I'll rewrite this in quadratic form by setting it equal to 0 by uh, subtracting 20 plus 2t from both sides. And this is what you end up with. Now you might be tempted... Now here, here's a fun little trick, actually. So you might be tempted to put all this into the quadratic formula and see how many results you get from that. But actually, there's a fun little trick. Because Part B is only asking for not the answers, but the number of times that this happens, there's a fun little trick we can use to get the answer to this pretty quickly. So if you've seen the, the quadratic equation in its, in its full form, then you'll know that there is a term that is underneath a square root. It's uh, the term that goes b squared minus 4ac, where b, a, and c all represent the coefficients in front of the t's for each of these terms. Now this whole term here is called the determinant, and it's useful because it alone can tell us how many solutions there are to the equation. If, if this determinant is, once we calculate it, is greater than zero, then that means that there are two answers, there are two solutions, two values of t for which this equation is true. If the answer is zero, if it's not greater than one, then that means that there is only one solution. If it's, less than the, if it's less than zero, then that means there are no real solutions, and any solutions that are there will be imaginary numbers. But uh, we generally can ignore that. R right now, let's just, let's just plug in our values in for, um, for the determinant and see what we get. And so keep in mind, this right here is going to be A in the context of this A right here. This 10 is going to be B, and this negative 20 is going to be C. And for this A, you'll just want to use negative 2.5 meters per second squared, since that's the acceleration we found before. It, once you do this, once you put these values into your calculator to find B squared minus 4AC, then you'll find that this turns out, it turns out that this is equal to zero. That means that there is only one valid value for T that makes this equation true. There is only one root in the formula. There is only one time that the cars are next to each other. So the answer for part B is just once. Part C is fairly straightforward. We're just asked to uh, sketch the position of car B over the original sketch. I've shown that right here. Basically what's going to happen is car B is going to begin with the acceleration we calculated before. But since the acceleration is negative, we can see that the entire time the slope of x sub b is decreasing. And they, only, and they only match up, they only meet up right here at this point, where we've got 4 seconds and 28 meters. So that's basically all you need to do for part c. Uh, part d asks how many times will the cars be side by side if the magnitude of a sub b is more than what we found in part a. So keep in mind the word magnitude here. If the magnitude is more than what we found, then that means that the answer will still be negative, but the number itself will, but the number will have increased. So let's say it'll be like negative 3.0 meters per second squared instead. Uh, which, which even though that's a larger magnitude, the acceleration is still smaller in terms of it being a vector. Now the answer to this might be pretty intuitive just from looking at the graph. If the magnitude is larger, and thus if the acceleration is smaller, and that means that car B is going to be slowing down at an even faster rate than it was before. So if it's only just barely meeting up with car A in, in the present situation, and if, if the acceleration is any lower, 
then it's easy to see that car B will just miss car A entirely and won't have caught up to it, even for that this specific second. So just from that, it's kind of obvious that the answer will be none, that they won't be side by side at all. Now, if that answer isn't satisfying for you, uh, there is a way we can prove that more mathematically and more professionally, because we can go back to the determinant thing. If the magnitude of the acceleration of A is any larger than, and you can verify this with your calculator by putting in dummy numbers or just by looking at the way the equation is set up, if the acceleration is any larger, or if the magnitude of the acceleration is any larger, then this determinant uh, becomes a negative number. It becomes less than zero which, since in the quadratic equation it's under a square root, that means that the equation has no solutions uh, aside from non-real imaginary solutions. So that right there alone is going to be proof that there is going to be no solution, no point to which the cards are side by side. Part E asks the same thing, except this time about the magnitude of the acceleration being less than what we found in Part A. This means that the acceleration will actually be greater and that car A is moving at a less negative rate. It's not slowing down as quickly. Which, again, we can kind of intuitively figure out that if that's going to be the case, then car B is going to, at some point, pass car A, and then when it's slowing back down, pass by it again as it's coming downwards. So, intuitively there, we can see that it's going to be twice. There are going to be two points at which the cars line up. Again, if you don't like that answer, we can use do this using the determinant, because if, uh, if, a, if the magnitude of A, the acceleration, becomes any less, then the determinant is going to have a value greater than zero, which, as we discussed before, means that there are going to be two roots, and thus two solutions. So that answers part E. I hope this video helped you. That does it for the entire problem. I hope this video helped you. If you have any further questions, please comment below. Uh, if you'd like to request other problems for me to do for this channel or other topics in general that you'd like me to cover, um, I've got my contact information in the channel description. I have a Discord server that you can come into if you want to talk to me. And that does it. Hope you all have a lovely day.